What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Duran, and we're here to talk more Celtics basketball as the Boston Celtics fall 119 to 129. Um, you know, let's just jump right into this game. I'm not really mad about this game. This is what I would call a good loss. And you know, the factors that you see in a good loss is, you know, really good shooting percentage, a lot of contribution from everyone, and things just didn't break right for the Boston in this game. You know, the call, it, what was the determining factor? The determining factor in this game well, the calls, some of the calls that, you know, Portland were getting were very iffy, especially down the stretch. I felt like the turning point for this game was when Marcus Smart got kicked out of the game. Um, that right there, I think there was like a, it, it felt like a 10, it felt, honestly, it felt like an hour delay where they were just trying to review it. And it was like, come on, man, this game is kind of, this, this, this delay was just spanning on longer than it had to be. You know, review it, make a decision and stick with it. I felt like Marcus Smart getting kicked out of the game really like just it's it sucked all the energy out of the out of the game in general and sucked out the energy out of the team. They just came out flat and could never really catch that rhythm, especially from that long, long delay that they had to wait for the for the refs to see the review on that. Um, I think they kicked him out because they thought he hit um uh what, what's his face? They, they hit the Trailblazer center in the nuts. Uh Nurkic, yeah, they, they they said they hit him in the nuts. I it's whatever i felt like it was an illegal screen clearly i felt like uh mark smart inadvertently went toward Nurkic's groin but it is what it is um my takeaways from this game of course jason tatum had another great game he honestly this was the best three game stretch from a boston celtics since probably isaiah thomas playoff series against the washington Wizards. this was his best three game playoff stretch um that i've seen from a celtic period since that since that time uh, Marcus Smart was pretty good in this game. I wouldn't say great, but he was pretty good defensively. Uh, Jalen Brown's just not right. Uh, Jalen Brown is dealing with uh, an ankle right now. It, it showed. He, he doesn't look right. Uh, the shots were not going down in this one. Again, he was 6 of 22. He, he needs a week off. I mean, just being honest, he needs a week off. And Fournier, Fournier was actually coming along, and it's Fournier at 21 points. He looked good. It's starting to feel like he's getting his breath back. You know, if Fournier's playing well, and you can get Kemba coming back next one, you might want to sit Jalen Brown for a week. Um, it, it probably more than that. We haven't even got an update because he got hurt at the end of the game. He collided with Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum said at the end of the game he was fine, but, you know, when, you when you're talking about that that freak accident it was scary it was scary but jason tatum said he was fine after the game we haven't got an update on jalen brown if anyone's seen an update go ahead and put it in the comments but i, I you know probably sit jalen brown if he's okay probably still sit him for about a week so he can get himself back together and we'll go back to the one of the main focuses of this of this uh video everyone's been telling me to talk about it i wanted to see him do it a, a third game in a row just one more game and see see what everyone's talking about aaron neesmith has been playing very well he has aaron neesmith has it has he turned the corner is my real question is this here to stay but these past three games against portland san antonio and, and charlotte He's looked really good. I mean, he's looked efficient. He's he's played really good defense. They were welcoming the switch with him on the floor. And, you know, what can you say? You know, he has completely taken it upon himself to play hard. And that's just going to be him. He's going to play hard the way he wants to do it. That's the way he's going to get on the court. That's the way he's going to contribute. And it feels like he's found his way of fitting on this team. And, you know, early on when we saw Aaron Neesmith, even with the opportunities, it felt like, he was scared. He was playing scared. Let's just be honest about it. It looked like he was playing scared. He shot the ball really fast, got the ball out of his hands too fast. And now we're seeing him play physical. We're seeing him go 100% all the time. We're seeing him shoot with confidence. That is one thing I've seen about this kid is he's shooting with confidence. His defense is really, really good. He was a plus 11 in this Portland game. He got absolutely cooked by Melo, though. But, you know, Carmelo Anthony cooks a lot of people. But... In these past couple past couple games, he's looked really good in my opinion. I don't know yet if I'll say he'll get playoff minutes. I've seen that floated around. But Aaron Neesmith has really, really come along. He's come along very well. I don't want to put too much on him and put too much shine on him because you want to see more consistency. I have to see this become a consistent thing. I think in the Charlotte game, he had 15 points. I think in the Spurs game, he had 15 points. No, 16 points in the Spurs game. And then the Portland game now, he has 16 points. We'll see. And in this Portland game, I was really focusing on him. But, you know, you see him playing hard. You see him getting rebounds. You see him getting putbacks. You know, he looks like a completely different player. He's, he's playing with much, much more confidence. And, um... That, I'm, it's, it's very enjoyable. It's very enjoyable with Aaron e. Smith right now. But... 
to sum up this game overall you can only take away some of the good things that you saw and the good things that i saw was evan fournier getting a little bit back to himself aaron neesmith finally you know becoming a contributor that we thought he could be when he got drafted and you're seeing more better defense by the celtics i'm seeing a little bit more more better defense by the celtics albeit the portland scored 30 points in about three of the quarters but like i said portland was getting a lot of free throw calls portland got a lot of free throws in it they had 26 free throws in this game uh boston had 15 so that, that tells you all all you need to know about this game when it comes to the calls they were calling a lot of fouls on boston a lot of iffy fouls and also another point in the game that i didn't talk about was that putback that should have counted by tristan thompson i think it was a brick by jason tatum and he had a putback and they had called it a goaltending right there and that would have took the lead and then portland goes back up on the other court i think uh mccollum shoots a three and that's a four point swing right there you know just off of boston being uh, ha just having that call missed right there it was just deflating it was deflating as a fan to watch it was deflating for the players and we all knew it just watching it boston got screwed in this game in my opinion they did down the stretch they got screwed and portland took back the momentum and, and they just never really had a chance towards the end of it Melo hit those two threes and that was about it that wrapped it up but man boston played hard and i felt like if the refs didn't really interfere and try and get put their hands all over this game boston probably would have found a way to get win this game they honestly would have found a way to win this one but that's just how things fall some way even if you're doing the right things you're paying with the right energy sometimes you know you lose a game anyway but guys as always i have nothing left for the video like comment and subscribe 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 for your boy peace